And here we go for the Phoenix Hagen off season. It's uh, a nice windy and rainy summer over here in Germany in Hagen. And on the other side of the ocean, there's somebody. We prepared something. <laughs> who's, guess who's coming back? The DMC, Tim McCall, is coming back for the 24 25 season. Young yeah, man, I. I honestly have to tell you, I'm more than happy to have you back for the upcoming season. Uh, so, hey, give us a, a crisp and quick uh, rundown to how it all come together with you coming back for the upcoming season. Yeah, I just um, I love the continuity um, of the group of guys coming back. Um, obviously, you couldn't bring everyone back. I know that's not too realistic in um professional basketball, but just the nucleus of guys coming back. I felt like the structure was all there from last year. Um, and it was just such a successful season. And I still feel like we didn't maximize our potential. Um, I feel like we could have done a bit more. I mean, we did great. It was, a, it was a successful year. But I just know that, you know, we had unfinished business as a team. We had lofty expectations. And I think that um, I think those expectations will carry over to this season and I think just everyone is going to come into the season. And, you know, I've already talked to some of the guys and just we know the expectations we have. We set for each other, um, coaching staff, um, management. I think we all have the same goal in mind after, you know, maybe surprising a few people last year. Um, might not be the same, might not have the same jump on people, um, catching them off guard as, as last year. But we, you know, we all – the guys I've talked to, we all you know, have the same mindset going forward, and that's just to, yeah, um, yeah, pick up where we left off. Well, having that strong nucleus is going to be a factor. I truly believe this, especially when you have so many teams around the league that are, you know, right. almost put together totally as a, as a group. So, mm -hmm. so it always pays off if you have a couple a couple of guys uh, from last year returning. Uh, would you agree that, given the fact that we had so many injuries down the road uh, towards the end of the season that this is where you might start to think in that kind of what if scenarios what if Marvin was healthy what if Brock was was with us for the players what if Siler doesn't get injured um, do you do you catch yourself you know thinking about all those what-if scenarios over the summer, or is this something that at some point you would say, hey, I thought about it way enough, then I then I should have, throw it out the window, all I do is looking forward now. Yeah, I, I'd lie if I said I didn't think about it um, from time to time when I was home during the summer, just like the what-ifs, like especially like watching the team we lost who end up winning it all. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd lie if I... So it wasn't on my mind, but at the same time, um, can't dwell on the past too much. You know, there's still a lot of basketball to be played going forward. And I think um, all things considered, you know, there were a lot of possibilities. Like you said, like, what if Marvin was healthy? What if um, who I'm, I'm excited to play with? I'd never, it'd be my first time really, you know, being on the court with Marvin um, for an extended period of time. So I'm excited to, to get out there with him. Um, um, yeah, Brock, Siler, I, I definitely, um, it was on my mind for sure, but can't dwell on the past too much you know like I said there's a lot of basketball to be played um it's not like anyone felt sorry for us that you know we were going through these injury woes or whatever every team has I say every team might have you know no team is as healthy throughout the whole season everyone has adversity to deal with and I think um we dealt with it at a tough time you know end of the season tough time for things like that to happen but I think um I think you know, we all learn from it and, and, and grew from it and can take that forward where, you know, we might not be in a super fa super favorable position, but um, that doesn't mean that we got to hang our heads or, you know, we've dealt with adversity before and got through it. So I think I think we grew. I think we grew as a, as a unit um, dealing with those things. And I think um, whatever adversity you might encounter this year, that we'll be more prepared for it. Absolutely. And to some degree, you already touched on it, but, but what's the, for you personally, what's the biggest takeaway from the 23-24 season? Um, especially when we look what we experienced down the road, given the fact that during that, that playoff run, 
uh, you had to play extended minutes. Uh, you know, teams scout you a little different. Then you have that that Kirchheim series where we're down one two. Mm -hmm. So you have to win a second time on the road, come back to Hagen and win the, the fifth game over here in front of a home crowd. Uh, what's the, the most positive or, or enhancing uh, takeaway from, from last year? Um, yeah, for me, it was my first playoff experience, I guess. That was really, that was probably the biggest takeaway. Um, like you said, that I think that game four in Kershaw was just such a pivotal point in at least in my career, um, so so far, I think um, everyone on the team might feel the same. Um, back against the wall, being able to come together as a unit, and no one, no, I never got the sense from anyone that, like, yeah, like we're going to. After we lost the game three in Hagen, I mean, no one was happy, but I never got the sense that, yeah, like everyone's gonna panic, we're gonna just lose our composure and not be able to. Yeah, stay together and just do what we do best. What we've done all season is just play together and, you know, play hard, compete. And, yeah, I think um, that game four was the biggest game of the season, obviously. more I say more so than the game five because it's, it's, a, it's a little different when you're going on the road in an elimination game versus when you're at home. Um, so I think just, yeah, dealing with that, I think I, that, that playoff series, the first one is – it was my biggest takeaway from the season. Um, just, yeah, like I said, my first playoff experience. And, yeah, the adversity. Like, we lost the first two home games. You know, we could have easily – we could have easily um, mailed it in from there and um, just not – not went into um, game four and five with um, just the same confidence and knowing we've been here before, knowing we've played well all season, um, trusting each other, I think, going forward – you know, yeah, just more adversity. I say that adversity just helped me grow a lot as a, not even just as a basketball player, but like as a human, you know, just knowing that, yeah, that when the back's against the wall, it's, it's never a time to, just to lose confidence in yourself and in your teammates, you know, just staying together as one. I think um, that would be my biggest takeaway from the year. So. And the thing is, what's, I mean, what's the, the on the opposite side, I'll be on the opposite end, what, what options do you have? I mean, when, yeah. you, when you're down one two, hey, do, do you want to stop playing or what? No. Nah. Hey, so you, you still have a chance? Go out there, beat them a second time on the fucking road. Excuse yeah. my language, but beat them a second time at their place. Right. And the moment uh, we won that game four, in my mind, there was no way losing game five. Yeah, I, I agree. It, feel, it felt like... Kirchheim has to close the series at their place, and if that doesn't happen, there's no chance, there's, there's no possibility they're going to come in here and, and steal a third game yeah. uh, in, in a row over, over here. Right. Uh, no way, no way at all that that's, that's going to happen. Um, and, I, and I think, and, and that would be my question to you, how do you view or how did, have you experienced uh, or how do you look at how the other guys on our team reacted to that playoff uh, experience and then to the playoff run? When you say, hey, you grew as a person and, and as a player, what's been the things that that you um, saw in, you know, in the guys around you? Because honestly, we didn't have too many guys with major playoff experience. You had Seiler and Nas who've been right. there with Fechter the year before. But all, almost everybody else never had a deep playoff run or a, ever maybe maybe never have ever has been to the playoffs before. So how could you see the other guys develop over the course of uh, of our playoff run? I mean yeah, like you said, um I can't truly speak for everyone else, um, but I know like you said there wasn't a ton of playoff experience when we talked before the series about, you know, like what this playoff series might be like. Um, yeah, there weren't a ton of guys who had been in those situations when we were when we were the, in the elimination game in game four. Um, like we got together and talked about like you know, if anyone's been in the situation before. And yeah, um, not too many of us on the team last year had been. So I think, um, I think, yeah, I think uh, they, it's, it's pretty consensus um, that 
I think everyone kind of went like another step inside, like just from a focus standpoint, I think just the attention to detail was so, was so sharp. Um, was so sharp from a game plan standpoint, from like a scouting perspective. I think everyone was just so, I feel like just the focus was vamped up from the regular season. Not to say that during the regular season that we weren't, you know, focused on the game plan, scouting, um, just being focused, um, being locked in. I just think that, you know, there was a lot, it was a lot more serious, you know, there wasn't as much, there wasn't as much, I don't want to say joking around going on, but I guess it's, we know, we knew, um, yeah, just that there was this business to be handled. And like you said, we, no one, I never got the vibe from anyone that when we lost, when we lost that third game, that there was any quit in, in anybody that just, yeah, like, oh, you know, we're down 2 1. Season might be over. Who cares what happens next game? Just, you know, looking forward to summer. I never even got like a inkling of a vibe from that from anybody. So I just think, um, I think we were just all of the same mindset, the same, had the same goal in mind. Um, and I think that we all, we all, we, I said we all grew from it. You know, even guys who had, you know, like Nas and Sal, who might have been in, who have won a championship before. I think um, that unique situation we were in. I think, I think everyone I grew at least as a basketball player from it. Just yeah, after that fourth game, just that that raw emotion I just felt from everyone. I think it was um, it's hard to put into words. It's hard to put into words. Yeah, and the thing is. Um... I think it's a testament to to the entire team, uh, yeah. the way that that the whole bunch stuck together, especially in those uh, harsh situations and those those tricky moments. Um, and I and that's that's something that, that I got asked a lot over the last season, regardless whether it's opposing coaches or media people or players or fans or whatever. And everybody was like. Hey, what makes this group so good, and and what's make what's the the secret mojo of this this Hagen team? Mm -hmm. And my response was always, hey, it's it's not about the we don't have the fanciest place that we run, uh, we don't have the super utmost talented talented players on earth, but we have a collective and we have that that bond and. Everybody on that team knows, hey, I can't do it on my own. We, I right. need those 9 to 11 guys around me and we got to do it together. I got to bring in what my best. I got to bring in what I can, you know, the, the best that I can bring to the table. Yep. Uh, you know, put in your strengths and let have this guy and this guy and this guy have chip in his strengths. And and the the, the best quality is... The team could not be broken mentally. That, yeah. That's that's the one thing that I always say that is like, hey, regardless whether you're as an opposing team when you're up twenty, you can't be so sure that this team is not able to, to come back because you can't break that roster, you can't break that, that team because right. no nobody's given up on, on on that team. Um and I think that, that has a, a lot to do with with everything and I told you this over the course of the season numerous times that that's has a lot to do with what you bring because what you bring to to this roster is so unique um that it helped propel this this team to whatever we accomplished accomplished last year um is 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 this something or and and we have to take a little we got to take the outside view now because uh, your dad was, was in attendance for, for quite some time. Yeah. Uh, and I do remember when we spoke last summer, um, we briefly spoke about him playing for Syracuse and Marquette. I mean, the, these big NCAA programs. Um, and now being over here in Hagen, uh, watching firsthand how his son is playing uh, over, over here. What did that do to to your uh, relationship as a as a father son son father? Yeah, damn, good question. Um, it was his I first. I know time. it's a totally different topic now, but uh, hey, that's how it goes. No worries. Um, that's a great question. Um, yeah, it was his first time actually coming out to see me play um, overseas. You know, my rookie year, he wasn't able to make it. Um, got his passport this past year, and um. Yeah, was able to come out for the playoffs, and I think you know him being able to come see the playoff game maybe a little more 
as a basketball fan, as like an avid basketball fan that he is, I think he could appreciate like just like the environment of, you know, compared to watching it on the TV, the actual vibes in the in the gym during playoff time. And this yeah, it was, man, it was just amazing for him to, for us to well, be undefeated when he was out here. You know, we won the two elimination games. So obviously that's a great feeling, but just for um yeah, just for them to see me just play at a high level. Um, I played pretty well. I had two pretty, I had pretty good games when they were here too. So um, I think that gave me a little more juice just knowing that I got that support in the crowd. I could hear them when I'm playing damn near. Like they were right behind the bench um, both times. So I could hear them when we were playing. Um, and just, yeah, I just, he knows, he knows good basketball. Um, trained me my whole life. Always worked out with him, always. Still gives me game to this day if I have, if I'm having issues or whatever, something's on my mind about basketball, even outside of basketball, but just basketball especially. Um, always someone I could talk to and I feel like he always tells me not what I want to hear, but it's the right thing to hear, you know? Um, so, um, man, it was amazing. Just it definitely, I guess he knew that it was high level basketball, but you don't really know until you get over there. And it's just different on the TV versus to sitting in the Ishland or just being in the, in Hagen when all the excitement is going on. So I think he, he, you know, had a, maybe a newfound appreciation for what I was doing over there. He knew what I was doing, but just, like I said, it's different when you can. Yeah, to experience something like this at first hand is, is always different. It's amazing. And they had an amazing time in Hagen. You know, the team took care of them, which I'm, you know, forever thankful for. Um, made making It makes them want to come back sooner, you know, so. I know he'll be out here before the playoffs next year. You know, he'll probably catch a few, catch yeah, a few very good games. For, for the entire playoffs. You know, <laughs> I know. Because right. as, as our personal uh, good luck charm. Good luck charm, I know, right? So, so to speak. Um, but when you say, hey, he's been coaching you all all, all live long and, and always uh, has given you feedback, uh, has he given you some feedback in regards to, I don't know if change is the right word here, but in what regard the... The Tamer call that left the States last summer mm -hmm. compared to the son he got back this summer, that that there's a difference, whether it's your personnel or playing wise, whatever. Did yeah, he give I'm, you some, some feedback in, in this regard? Yeah, I mean he kind of I say yeah, he that's a little different, I think now. I say since I've became a pro professional, he's kind of um I guess it's changed the way like we've talked like you know he feels like he doesn't have to you know tell me everything anymore like I'm I'm not saying I know a lot more than him but I say I know more about just the professional game than he does so um especially Europe um so just I think it'd be more so instead of I guess like instead of drills or you know telling me to do this and that um on the court it might just be like effort you know like oh like You need to run, like just this effort. Like if you would have ran harder here, you might have got a layup or just effort ha having a higher motor, um, rebounding. It'll it'll be little things like that. Just you know, not nothing from a skill standpoint. It'd be all effort. So like when I'm home for the summer, it hasn't even been like we'll work out. He'll rebound for me. He'll be stuff like that. But he doesn't give me a ton of drills anymore. It's more so we'll be in the weight room. We'll be running. Um, Stuff like that, he feels like he could really, you know, help me build. But just as a basketball player, he's kind of, I'm not going to say he's left me alone, but he's kind of like, yeah, like, it's time to work on your little brother now, you know. It's his time. I kind of, there's not much more I can tell you. Um, so I think it's more, I feel like we've all, we've been peers, like, we from that standpoint. Um, I say since I got to college, but now it's like, I think maybe it's a little newfound respect, you know. He kind of, like, my work here is done, you know. Like, it's time for give all my energy to low man so yeah it's definitely definitely um and I definitely feel just as a basketball player more confident more sure of myself in my game as opposed to when I came home my rookie year because you know we didn't win a lot of games we weren't really competitive so I didn't know I guess I wasn't really too sure about um just yeah like how I would be with a, a team that wants to win a competitive team how I play in the playoffs just, yeah so I think um And I think there's still more room to grow. You know, like I said, I, I think I had a, a decent Kirschheim series. I didn't play as well in the Carlsen series. And I took that with me over the summer, you know, took that, watched the film a lot. Um, been working on weaknesses. And, um, yeah, I'm just excited to show him and just you guys just what I've, what I've been working on this summer.
Yeah. And the thing is, I coming back to to culture, they've been streaking hard during yeah. these playoffs. I mean, they were on fire. I mean, they they deserve to to take the crown at the end of the day. And I truly, I still believe, if when everybody's healthy, we can beat them. Mm -hmm. But given the circumstances, say it's okay to to lose against a, a streaking hot team like this and them taking on Frankfurt in the final series with two wins in a row. That's that's yeah. totally fine fine to me. Uh, but coming back to your father one last time is um, what I'm. What well, my question is, being a father myself, uh, does it give you a a certain sense of freedom to always know, hey, I know he's he's there. I know he can fall back to just in case I need something, just in case I need some whatever it may be, some some advice, some words of wisdom, some some support, some positive minor words, whatever it may be. For sure, man. Like I'm blessed to like just have a father in my life. Um, you know, a couple of my friends that like, might not have their dads in their life, but I have my father who's been around since I can remember and it's always been yeah, I've always felt like I could fall back on him, like when things are going bad. I always could rely on him, you know, like I said, whether it be advice, if I was ever in trouble, you know, he'd be the first person I'd call. Um, basketball advice, life advice, um, like relationship advice, it could be anything. He's, I feel like he's dropped so much knowledge on me throughout my years, and it would be, it, it's wrong of me to not use that resource, you know, and I probably don't do it enough, um, especially when I'm overseas, you know, it's, it's tough sometimes to, um, it's just, it's tougher than, than obviously than when you're than when they're in reach or you know like I went to when I was in college he was only still like a two hour drive away an hour and a half um, and it's a little different when they're in a ten hour flight you know the phone conversations might not hit the same as actually you know sitting in front of them um, and talking to them so that's it's been nice this summer man we've had a lot of time to just sit and talk and pee each other's brains and yeah it's something I'll do forever like I'll never stop. Um, asking him for advice and just getting some free game. You know, he always has, every time we talk, it seems like there's always some good advice or just, even if it's not good advice, just, even if it's not advice I'm looking for, it might just be something that, that I need that to hear. Could, yeah, or that you could take away from it. Yeah. Right, right, exactly, I'm blessed. And maybe that's, at the end of the day, maybe that's a good thing, this, this overseas pro thing, you know, that, uh, you know, this has, somewhat unlocked a a new level of father-son relationship given the fact that you say hey, now hey I'm a, it's a 10 hour flight from here so I have to to cherish and and, and, and live and, and, and enjoy these moments that we have together over the summer even more you know maybe, maybe that that's that's a thing that this this job that you have has unlocked something something new um, and there's something that you already touched on um, your first pro year, the rookie year with Schwenningen was extremely difficult uh, and we touched on that last summer when we joined, yeah. when you joined Hagen uh, and now given the fact that you had a pretty good 23-24 season, so it's the, the not the total opposite but a one year you play against relegation all the time, this year you play, yeah, you fight for finals berth. Um, how did this really help or not help for you to figure out who you are as a basketball player? I think you already touched on it a little bit, but do you really know who you are as a basketball player and what you're capable of, given the fact that hey, you had to be or you have been this player one year and last year it's been a totally different situation from that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, obviously, I'm still growing. I still think I have potential that, you know, to be great. You know, I want to be great one day. I don't think I'm there yet. But, you know, I'm, obviously, I'm working every day to be great. But it's different, um, just to answer the question, it's it's a lot different when, like you said, you're, you don't have much expectations, I guess. Like, maybe, I think, you know, we started off poor my rookie year, and then we were, like you said, fighting relegation all year, and then the whole bankruptcy thing and there was just a lot of different type of adversity as opposed to in hogging like i feel like the adversity there was um just like the, the the positive expectations like oh like you guys started off great you know we were the one seed at, at one point and then i think it was just 
the expectation is just to keep being great. Um, like you said, to fight for the finals in China. We wanted that one seed. Um, we wanted to earn that one seed during the playoff. To, um, during the regular season, we wanted to set ourselves up for the playoffs. We, you know, we we had finals expectations. So it's just a complete one eighty, honestly, man. Just and for myself, I guess um, I wouldn't say it was more pressure um, as a player, but it's just. Um, I would say, and I would still say I learned more this year, um, experience-wise, in my rookie year. Just, um, you know, playing more games. I had I played a lot more minutes my rookie year as a, in a minute-per-game um, type of thing. And I my numbers might have been a bit down this year, but I still feel as I grew as a basketball player, um, a lot as a basketball player. I got a lot better than I did my rookie year. Um, like, a, a ton better, even though my, my numbers might not quite show it. Um, I think I grew, um, yeah, skill-wise, reading the game, the game slowed down for me. Um, playing big minutes in big games and playing well in those minutes do a lot more for my confidence than playing, having a good game, but we ended up losing, um, by 10, 15, and, you know, no one expected us to win the game anyways, you know, so I think going forward that, um, yeah, yeah, the big minutes I played this year were just exponentially more important to my growth than um, the big minutes and big games were more important to my growth than yeah, playing games where no one expects us to win anyway, you know. True, absolutely. Uh, and when you say, hey, the numbers might have dropped a little, or at least when you, when you look at those... Uh, Fav the famous three, you know, the points per game, rebounds, and right. assists per game. That those numbers went down just just a little, but the biggest number from last year is a one hundred and five point one. One hundred five point one. Is that my that's defensive your, rating? That's your defensive rating, right? Okay. There. Okay. See that I like I like the way you think. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> One hundred, one hundred and five point one, okay. uh, and that's uh, the second best individual defensive rating behind Leonard on our team. Lenny had a uh, 90, 99 point something. Man, okay. um, was only one out of around about ten guys in the entire league below one hundred. Uh, then you had a little gap, and but this this one hundred and five is is pretty awesome, given the fact that overall as a team we had a defensive rating around one. One six, one seven, or so. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so this, this, to me, again, is a testament to to what you brought to the table. Not just being a a premier individual defender, but you know, uh, lifting everybody up on on defense and, and then boosting our entire defense up, uh, because everybody knows, hey, I can be a little bit more aggressive on on the ball because I know on weak side I got that Tame McCall guy sitting. Yeah. His long arms, his big steps. Who's gonna? He'll be there for for some help. You know, I right. uh, can be a little more aggressive on on the shooter, or uh, you know, at, at, attack close out differently because I know, hey, if the guy, guy uh, catches me with with his with his drive, he's gonna be there for, you know, to to stand in and, and fill the void. Or if the shooter lets it fly, that take calls guys coming in from the weak side catching the rebound stuff like this right so um so that's that's the number that's that stuck with me when we come when we talk about numbers from from last year um but when you say um hey, it's been a a ton more play uh, a ton more games to play last year compared to your rookie season mm -hmm. uh we're talking about uh, a 13 game differential here you yeah. played 29 in, in training and, and, and a total 42 last year and with us in Hagen. Um, is there something that, or is your, your, how you approach pro life now, is there something, hey, something that you added to it or something that you, some, some new to it, whether it's nutrition, whether it's sleep and rhythm, stuff, stuff like this? Yeah. Um, I just think this, you got to take care of your body, um, playing that many games, um, especially, um. Yeah, like you said, it was 13 more than my rookie year. Most games I played in my life, so I had to really, um, as the season went on, 
a ton of ice, man. A lot of ice. A lot Come of like. Come on, you're in your mid twenties. You could play. You should have. You should be able to play sixty a season. Come on. Oh, I I think I would have been okay to play that, but um, I think I take good care of my body to put myself in a position, um, to be at that point. You know, nutrition has always been big for me. Um, something my my parents always taught me. You know, if I want to have longevity in this i can't just be treating my body any type of way whether that be food whether that be just yeah like you said sleep is important stretching um just how i walk how i sit in chairs too long just all the little things that like that the average person might not think about but that might add you know two or three years on in my career if i just if i, if I play it right now so um yeah a ton of ice um ton of just like rolling, stretching, knowing um maintenance lifts. I say like not lifting heavy during the season, but lifting to maintain. Um, and yeah, Jonas helped me a lot with that, man. I, I'd, be, I'd be wrong if I didn't show him out, man. Um, man taught me a lot about just the intricacies of 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 the athlete's body and just how the little things like posture and how you walk, how you sleep, what position you sleep in. Um, how just how far that goes like that something I guess I hadn't thought about too much before so yeah Jonas definitely um big shout out to him taught me a lot about not just my body but I guess other people's bodies and how and how it's just all it's all connected so I say um I would say that just yeah just a lot I'll say ice ice I fight ice more this year than this summer <laughs> than, I, than I have than I have in a while man yeah. Yeah, sure. the, the one the major takeaway my personal my biggest takeaway from Jonas is no coffee uh, after 4 p.m <laughs> I don't know if he told you this as well but yeah uh, at, at some I don't know what occasion it really was but it was some some even an event or so and I we just just were standing together as a, as a group of people and you know the, the waiter came by and he was like hey anybody wants something to drink and I was like damn I feel like coffee now and Jonas just looked, checked his watch and it was like come on JB it's like eight in the evening you can't <laughs> you can't drink coffee now and I'm like yeah but I feel like drinking it so right. I have no problems drinking coffee late at night it doesn't hurt my sleeping rhythm right. and he said ah that, that's not what I'm talking about here that there's a hey, something in coffee that needs a certain time to really be digested by, by uh, digest by your body right. and when you consume coffee past 4 p.m that really goes or this digestion part goes into your sleeping rhythm and then your body doesn't consume whatever it has to consume the right way i was like okay damn maybe maybe i should think about this and ever th and ever since uh, i maybe have I maybe drank coffee once or twice past 4 p.m. But ever since I, I stick to that no coffee past 4 p.m. thing, at least it feels like I'm living a healthier life now. And that, Jonas, I'm forever thankful for. I actually didn't know that. So, yeah, I'm going to take that with me too. If you're a coffee drinker, I don't know this. I actually, as the season went on, I, I started getting into it more. For sure, you grew on me. Yeah, well, welcome to Europe. Welcome <laughs> to Europe, huh? That's that's the thing. Um, but but has there been uh, food-wise anything that you know something something new that you put in your your daily routine or some I don't know spices whatever. Given the fact that hey, we have a we have a vegan on our roster with with Dennis who is yeah. just thinking food consumption just just different. Is, is there something you that you took away from it? Um, I th I think I've always ate pretty well. I've always been conscious of what I put in my body. Um, I definitely am a. I mean, it's it's pretty inspiring watching Dennis be vegan. I definitely aspire to be that one day. Um, like I don't eat red meat, so it's really just chicken, fish, and yeah. One day, I like to go on an all green diet. Um, you know, well, yeah, greens and fruits, grains. Um, one day for sure. Um, definitely inspiring. I don't know if I could do it today if I could, you know, give up some of the things that I like to eat. But um, I yeah, I guess I've just been a lot, especially this summer. I haven't just been 
No, I, I might have had a one, two week period where I was eating, you know, things I was craving that I couldn't get to in Europe, you know, obviously Chipotle, Chick-fil-A, um, a lot of that. But um, I definitely have still been pacing myself. I know, yeah, I know preseason would have started soon wherever I would have resigned and I didn't, I'd never want to come into something like that out of shape or just maybe not out of shape in like my terms, but just at a weight where I'm not comfortable at, or, you know, maybe just body fat percentage, not a certain number where I want it to be. So yeah, it's been, it's been conscious eating and drinking and new and supplements. Awesome. For sure. Supplements. Yeah. I guess I've, I've introduced that to more to my body, a lot more, you know, just a little vitamin, um, turmeric, yeah. Fish oil, omega three, just so I could go down the line. So things I take every day now, just, for, for longevity purposes. Yeah, I agree. But no. do you feel like a, you're starving from time to time or all the time or over the course of the season? Or is this something uh, where you would say, nah, the, the diet that I'm, that I'm going with, this, this is totally fine for me when we, when we talk about hey, once the season starts? Oh, um, no, I think during the season it's actually a little easier. Like, I think... I have to eat more during the season because, you know, I'm burning more calories, um, practices, whether it be two a days, lifts, individual workouts, games. I think I burn more over the course of the season than I do when I'm home during the summer. So I guess I'm just conscious of that eating, making sure I'm eating enough, like making sure even if I'm not hungry, that I know that I need to eat this. Um, I might not feel like cooking dinner or eating after practice, but I know I need to eat. Because if I don't, like you said, I'll be sluggish tomorrow. I might not have the energy I need to going forward. Um, so, yeah, I, I think um, I wouldn't say I'm ever starving or that I'm not eating enough or that I'm not or I don't have food to eat. You know, it was more so just, um, yeah, knowing I need to eat, knowing I need this energy and, and kind of, um, I'm not going to say forcing myself to, but, yeah, making sure I get this a certain amount of calories every day going forward just so that I know I'm not sluggish the next day or not super hungry and or like super hungry late at night and want to snack you know just little things just little things but I definitely enjoy the food in Hagen and uh, I did a couple of spots I'm looking forward to to getting back to nah. okay maybe, maybe we should uh, at some point over the, over the course of the season uh, write down a little uh, food How do, you, how do you call it? A food advisory manual or so? Yeah. Places you have to go to when, when at Hagen, stuff like this. Uh, coming to an end, Tay. Um, looking forward to, to, next, to, to the upcoming season. Maybe not preseason, because preseason is hard. Preseason <laughs> is work, sweat, tears. Yeah. Uh, you know, going through all those X's and O's, nah, that's not fun, but that's just part of the business. Um, but, but what is it that you are, or what are the one or two things that you're looking forward to the most when we talk about the upcoming season? Oh man, I, I can't wait to see the guys. Like, I don't, I could go through individually every guy, but just the whole team coming back, man. Like, I loved all those guys. Had so many just, I probably... I could have got out more with them, but um, I yeah I could have got out more, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do that more this year. You know, spend a lot more time than them. We spent a lot of time together last year. Don't get me wrong, but um, this is a great group of guys, man. I love each and every one of them. Hanging out with them, I could hang out with each and every one of them individually, um, and there'd be something to talk about, something to do, It'd be good conversation, and be good vibes, and that also that's a, a big part of why I came back. You know, that continuity that I spoke on earlier. Um, Just I know what I'm getting into. I know every one of the guys that I play with is a good guy. Um, and I think they all see me the same way. You know, we all got along. So definitely, um, I say I'm most looking forward to being around those guys and just being in that environment, talking, talking mess, um, trying to practice my German before I go over there. So I got a little, you know, something to talk about with them. Maybe I could surprise them, surprise them a little bit. Just finish this. There you go. Good yeah, my thoughts right now, yo. Yeah. Hey, sir. Are you good? So, uh, so, so you, are you saying that we're going to have a press conference in German this year? 
Oh man, I don't know about all that, but I give you guys a couple of sentences, couple couple words, or a couple um yeah phrases. No swear words, no swear oh, words. Definitely not. <laughs> just just on, just on the floor. Uh, but very last question because you mentioned that you guys came together as a as a group a ton last year. Uh, are we talking about game nights or just you know hanging around eating pizza and watching TV nights? Yeah, game nights. I'm um, going out to eat, just going out different cities, exploring. Like it was my first time in that area of Germany, so you know them showing me around different spots, where the good food is, um, good sights to see, and yeah, I feel like I could I could have done more exploring last year, um, and it's definitely something that I'm gonna do this year, and just yeah, just even if we're just over each other's apartments and just watching Euro League, you're just playing cards and game nights, yeah, it's everything, everything. Um, Including just this quality time, you know. Good group very of last, very last question. <laughs> right. uh, when it comes to you know card games, board games, whatever, who's the most competitive on the team, or who has been the most competitive on the team, and what's the one game that you're unbeatable at? Man, that's a great question. The most competitive might be like a three-way tie. I say Timbo, pretty competitive, Lenny. Ah, dang, that's tough. I figure, I figure, and I say this with the utmost respect, and I love him to death. Yeah. I could envision Dennis as a sore loser. <laughs> <laughs> Not a sore loser, but he, but he hates to lose. I figure he hates to lose. Yeah, I think we all do, but he, yeah, definitely. He's another guy, um, likes to win, but yeah, I say, I wouldn't say a sore loser. I wouldn't say quite a sore loser, but who likes to lose, you know? Nobody does. And but what, what's your go-to? What's your go-to game where you say, "Hey, come at me! I'm gonna beat you anyways." Man, I mean, we played a lot of Uno last year. Won, won a fair amount of games. Um, card games or like video games too, like anything included. Like, like I'm I'm pretty good at like Mario Kart, 2K. I'm pretty confident in my in my abilities and those two. I'm, I don't think anyone on the team could beat me. Um, Uno, I like to play Uno, Spades, house, house rules, right? Uno house with rules, house for rules. Sure. House rules, for sure. Got to come so, to a hey, consensus. if I play plus two, you can put another plus two on top yeah. of it, on the stack, right. so the other guy has to take four, right? Yep, yeah, yeah. Okay. but you can't okay. put a plus two on a plus four. You know, no, you no, that's do, not, no. Nah. Can't do that. Nah, can't do this. Okay, can't do that. Gonna have to, we're going to have to get, get around it when I get back, man. Yeah, sure. I see. I see. We'll, we'll make something happen. I'd love to, man. Awesome. And we have to talk about this uh, Mario Kart thing as well because. Oh know, yeah. That, that's my thing. Yeah. yeah okay. Sure. Okay. Give me, give me, a, give me, give me a toad and give me a race car. I'm, a, <laughs> I'm gonna beat your ass. <laughs> we'll see about that. Man. <laughs> we'll see about this, and we're gonna stream it live somewhere. And we need a Twitch channel for. Yeah, for I know, right? Angle. I see. Damn it. Don't, don't get me started with any crazy ideas, Tate. Hey, <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks for catching up. Thanks for talking. Uh, my, my pleasure. Thanks, and and, and uh, again, good, good to have you back for the for the twenty four twenty five season, sir. Man, like, super excited to be here. I can't wait to get back to work. <laughs>